here, we discover that our planet's atmosphere is but a very thin layer separating the Earth beneath our feet from the infinity of space. What you don't see from space is the major geological activity hidden below the Earth's surface. To better understand the Northern Lights, we'll need to look deep inside our planet. Earth's interior is extremely hot and made up of two distinct parts. The inner core, consisting mainly of iron solidified by pressure, and the outer core, which is also made of iron, although in molten form, that churns around the inner core. It is believed that the convection movements in the outer core generate Earth's magnetic field. Our planet's magnetic field forms the framework of an immense shield that protects life from charged particles flowing from space. This is the magnetosphere. Like its core, Earth is roughly spherical. The magnetosphere surrounding our planet, however, is anything but spherical. In fact, Something out there disturbs and warps it. That something is our star. The sun is a gigantic ball of gas that gives off light and heat, but also emits an endless stream of electrical particles that travel at over 400 kilometers a second. Invisible to the naked eye, these particles flow out in all directions and make up the solar wind, which presses against and deforms our magnetosphere. These images of the sun are real. What they show is neither fire nor magma. It is hot glowing gas called plasma. The arches and loops of plasma we see on the surface are several times larger than Earth. occurs on the sun's surface, which causes a coronal mass ejection, a strong gust of solar wind that can occasionally head directly towards Earth.
projections heading towards our planet put our magnetosphere to the test. The giant shield buckles under pressure from the solar wind and traps some of the charged particles flowing from the sun. These particles rain down toward the magnetic poles and it's at this point that our atmosphere comes into play. The solar wind particles plunging towards Earth collide with atoms in the upper atmosphere, which emit the energy they absorb in the form of light. And that's how the auroras are born. Since the solar wind is constantly blowing on our atmosphere, auroras can happen anytime. Solar eruptions amplify the phenomenon. Invisible in the daytime, they appear only when it's dark. Long winter nights are ideal for observing auroras, but they're more frequent and intense around the equinoxes, in September and March. When the aurora borealis occurs near the North Pole, a mirror-like image occurs simultaneously in the Southern Hemisphere, the aurora australis. There's a very special place where you can observe the northern lights several times a day. A place you wouldn't suspect. from space is one thing, but to see them from the ground, you need to choose your location wisely. Northern lights form in a zone known as the Auroral Oval, which usually encompasses all the Arctic countries. The North Magnetic Pole is slightly offset in relation to the geographic North Pole. It tilts toward Canada. <coughs> The result is that in Canada, the northern lights appear more to the south than they do in other Arctic regions. The auroral oval varies in size and latitude depending on the sun's whims. When gusts of solar wind are very strong, the zone reaches as far south as the tropics. If you monitor solar activity, you will likely see auroras even if you don't live under the auroral oval. Obviously, to see them properly, you need clear skies. Under the usual position of the auroral oval, some of the most favorable weather conditions exist in Canada's Northwest Territories, home to Great Slave Lake, the ninth largest in the world. Here 
in Yellowknife, winters are long and very cold. This massive lake freezes over, making the ice surface strong enough for all kinds of travel. winter. Far from being an off-season, it's one of the most exhilarating times of the year. Under the auroras, you forget the cold and lose yourself in the splendor of the lights. The colors depend on the atmospheric gases being excited by solar particles. Each molecule and atom gives off its own color. The green comes from oxygen, the same gas we breathe, as it reacts to the solar particles at an altitude of between 100 and 300 kilometers. As for the pink tips at the bottom, they stem from nitrogen. If solar activity is exceptionally intense, red auroras can be observed. At times you might see blue given off by hydrogen or purple produced by helium, two very light gases found only in the very upper atmosphere. When the sky is uniformly green, shadows can be seen snaking through the fields of color. Little is known about these mysterious black auroras. Some of you have already seen the northern lights, but have you ever heard them? The question itself is controversial. Up where the auroras form, it's impossible for sound to travel, and yet, many people claim they've heard crackling or chirping sounds. Recently, with the help of special devices, recordings have been made of sounds similar to those reported by observers. It seems they weren't imagining things after all. It's not clear exactly what's going on, but it seems that during peak activity, Geomagnetic disturbances created by solar particles induce an audible sound in the atmosphere about 70 meters above the ground. That is the sound of an aurora. The rhythm of the northern lights is unusual Sometimes it takes hours for the show to really get going, so recorded images of the auroras are often accelerated. These images, however, were filmed in real time during the most intense part of the evening. A truly spectacular light show. reach their peak between 11 p.m. and midnight. But if the activity is intense enough, another burst may occur around 3 or 4 in the morning. 4 a.m. may seem late, 
but no one feels like going to bed. Quite the contrary. The energy coming from the sky is exhilarating. It makes you want to party. find all the answers, we'll still be just as amazed as our ancestors once were by the greatest celestial spectacle of all. Thank you. 